Ching, birthday tomorrow, he'll be 20, so he's the youngest rider in the field, he's in red, grid three, Kenny Carter on the outside, the unpredictable Finn Thompson, the outside gate was uh, the one that won heat one, so can England anchor in there with Kenny Carter in heat two. Carter was almost caught in the game, but that's a better start. And it looks as though Carter has hit the corner in front. Carter leads it, coming around the outside. It is Thompson holding on on the inside. We have Lance King from America. And England are in front again. And the Lions look to be roaring tonight. Carter leads it. King is second. Third place, Thompson. And Carter is stretching down the back straight. unmistakable style of the Halifax Flyer. He's got Lance King, a world finalist. Both these riders are world individual finalists. And King is a gritty competitor and is not allowing Carter to get clear. Thompson has dropped way back out of contention. There is the battle up front. Coming into the last lap, 300 metres. And it looks like right at the back there, Stansler has got up on Thompson for third place. You can see just on the right there as the battle heats up up front and at the back and King is making his effort around the inside of Carter. Carter will hold him out. He wins it. And in third place, and that could be crucial, was Stancil. And so Denmark with Thompson will be rather feared. This man might be the host nation's Achilles heel. And they've dropped valuable points. Carter wins it for England. The crowd there not looking too happy at Finn Thompson. But England have made a most remarkable start. Two wins, and they are looking good at this early stage. And the Danish camera is naturally focusing on Oli Olsen. Really a, a folk legend. There is David Jessup for England. DJ, of course, a vastly experienced World Cup campaigner. This is his sixth final. He scored 35 points in World Cup finals. No stranger to this atmosphere. Here is the lineup on the inside. Bobby Schwartz, the American captain and one of the great motivators. He's in red. Next to him, Oli Olsen. The Danes need his magic now. Grid Three has Vassilov Werner from Czechoslovakia in blue, but it's uh, long in the tooth these days. And Dave Jessup on the outside, yellow and black for England. England have made two very bright starts at the tapes. Can Jessup do the same? Away they go. And cutting across the field, it is Jessup from the outside and Schwartz from the inside. And that's the third tremendous start from the Englishman. Olsen trying to squeeze up the inside of Bobby Schwartz. Schwartz closing down that avenue for him. And Werner goes wall on that corner, but Jessup's in front for England and the English lads look in immaculate form he's in front, Schwartz is second, Olsen is trying hard to make some inroads on Schwartz for second place and Olsen will try the outside run and might just have the grip and drive here as Schwartz moves across to cover him, the battle for second place but Jessup in front looking very cool and in control really is a marvellous start for England. They've got uh, a fairly impressive record in this event. In six finals as England, they've never finished below second place, although they failed to qualify for the final for three years in 82-79. And Jessup has stopped, and Olsen has taken out, and oh my word, when is this rider's luck going to change in world finals? Just when we were leaning back and feeling that it was all over by the shouting, Jessup Again packed up in front, while leading. That's the third time in a world final that I can recollect. Certainly in two individual finals. Now in a World Team Cup final. And just when it was all coming up roses for England, the rain started to fall. And that is a body blow for England. Dave Jessup, the old Dave Jessup luck again. What happened? Well, at the moment we're not too sure. The mechanics are just whipping the top off at the minute. But unfortunately, I think it's a big end at this moment. So you got another bike to switch to? No. I not another GM with me. So you have to borrow one now? Well, I, we're going to have a talk about it. Peter has offered me his bike, but it's just a matter of who we think can ride his bike best, him or myself. England going so well, David, well, and, uh, and you. Well, in front, I mean, I, I, I must say I'm not a lover of Voyans, but, uh, you know, I was doing the stuff then, and, well, some sort of luck still with me. Well, such a familiar story from Voyans, because now... We have a very sharp shower of rain. It's raining quite heavily. It is very blustery out there, so hopefully it will go through. And so a World Cup final that has already had uh, its incidents and drama, and indeed in England's case, uh, disappointments. There's the score. You can see England, who looked to be so much in command early on, they have slid to third place. America, who haven't had a last place yet in 
the lead on 13 points the defending champions Denmark easing into second place behind them on 11 England back on 10 and Czechoslovakia really already out of contention Carter is back in the action for England that's heartening news because they've had uh, three very disappointing races on the trot Carter won his first race he's on the inside this time next to him will be Hans Nielsen in white for Denmark with three we'll have Alice Drimmel from Czechoslovakia who didn't score first time and on the outside Bobby Swartz who took advantage of that engine failure by Jessup to win his first ride so here we go heat seven England can't afford to drop any more points Carter is Nielsen right next to him it's going to be a mad scramble up to the first corner Carter is nudging the tapes and he mustn't do that he's going to be caught if he's not careful going backwards and he has been caught and Nielsen's away Nielsen gets away, Carter's second, coming hard around the outside, it is Dribble, and at the back is Bobby Schwartz, but uh, Nielsen there made the clean break, Carter did well to regain some ground, Schwartz is uh, struggling to get past Dribble into third place, there is Nielsen, he leads it, second place Carter, Dribble has got back inside, Bobby Schwartz and locked up in front of him, and Schwartz has gone clear, just out of our picture, this is the leading two, Carter glances back over his shoulder, Scott Schwartz a long way back, Nielsen is going to pull the Danes a little nearer, America, Carter who really, we recall in the intercontinental final at White City last weekend, he was caught at the tapes and he did the same thing again here, he's made some ground up on Nielsen but Hans Nielsen who won the intercontinental final doesn't make mistakes when he's in front, so here comes Carter around the outside in a bold bid but it doesn't seem to be that much dirt and right on the line Schwartz holds on, you can see Nielsen the winner, second place was Kenny Carter, the Danes really have pulled themselves up by the boot laces, the Americans, Bobby Schwartz won't be happy with the third place, Bobby hurtling back to the pits, Carter made a mistake at the start and it's still very very close in the top bracket, you can see that in fact brings Denmark level on 14 points with America, with England uh, by no means out of touch on 12 points, and they leave who won heat one, looking uh, back at his peak, the peak that indeed brought in the world individual title in 1980, comes in here as uh, the Americans and the Danes battle it out at the top, and England still lurking in there dangerously, they must really recover their composure. Inside here, coming in for Finn Thompson, the Danish reserve, Peter Rawn in white, next to him Michael Lee, yellow black, grid three, Dennis Segalos, this uh, talented Californian who is such a grand stylist and such a steady gator and a difficult man to pass when he gets in front. On the outside the veteran Vasla Werner from Czechoslovakia, he'll be in blue so it will be interesting to see just how Ron who comes into the action for the first time in his first World Cup final start of the season as a reserve at Bellevue, he really has uh, rocketed to the top here, can he withhold Michael Lee and Dennis Segalos, it would certainly bring the crowd to their feet here in Voice if he can, here we go for Heat 8 Away we go, and up to the first corner, it looks like Sagalos has just got the drop on Lee, he has, Lee is in second place, coming round the outside into third place, it is Werner for Czechoslovakia, but England's gating talent seems to have deserted them, and uh, battling hard now, Raw trying to get outside, Werner and he's just squeezed through for third place, so Sagalos in front, Lee in second place, but Sagalos is disappearing over the horizon, this man from Ipswich, when he gets in front, he's talking to the bits, well, there's impudence for you. And the American showmanship, they said they uh, really were nowhere near as strong as they have been without Bruce Pennell and without Sean Moran, the Sheffield star who broke his leg just prior to this final. But now the Americans are in front, taking advantage of some good fortune when Dave Jessup uh, stops and Lee is closed up on Segalos. Segalos is looking for him. Now on to the last lap and uh, Lee will make one effort around the outside of Segalos, is he slowing? Is he slowing? He is! And Lee is going to catch him! Lee wins it, on the line, second place Segalos, third there in white was Peter Rawn, but Segalos it looked as though he was slowing down, Lee took advantage to move in, and well that uh, partially retrieves uh, the damage for England, with America taking advantage of Jessup, it definitely looked as though Segalos was slowing in the last lap, looking back for Michael Lee, we wondered if he was just uh, employing some psychology, but Lee took his chance, moved up, won heat eight, and that makes matters interesting in the score charts. Dennis Segalos, what really happened? Uh, <laughs> I don't really know, I know Michael passed me around the outside, uh, 
about the first or second lap, I looked behind and I saw he was he was back there quite a ways, and uh, I think I just fell asleep. You know, I was right right on the inside, and it's not my place to ride. You know, I I usually like to ride the outside, and I wasn't really looking to where where he was. And coming in the last bend there, he just just went around the outside of me, and so I just fell asleep. You know, it's just inexcusable. So there we see the position at the halfway point, the United States with 16 points, both England and Denmark on top nations. England will look to Michael Lee on the inside grid. Next to him, Alice Trimble has done nothing two last places. Oli Olsen has had a second and a third in grid three. On the outside, the very steady young Lance King, two second places. He has been an important cog in this American machine here in Voyens. Lee, well, he's unbeaten and uh, really kept going to the chequered flag last time out to catch Dennis Segalos right on the last corner. England looking to Lee, way on the inside. And they're under starters orders and Lee tried to jump them. And away this time, and from the inside it is Lee who has made the run up to the corner. Olsen's in second place, going around the outside, and coming through on the inside. It was Dribble, where did he come from? But Lee managed to hold out the twin thrust of Olsen and Dribble. At the back it's King, this is better news for England. King battling through on the inside of Dribble into third place for the Americans and getting up on Ollie Olsen's back wheel, but Dribble has not finished. There is the leading pair, Lee in front for England. The rare old Dingol for second place developing with Dribble going around the outside of King. And if the Czechoslovakian could get up here, that would really make a lot of difference to the score. But in fact, he's made a hash of the bottom corner. Is out of our picture. They're following Lee up front. And uh, well, so should we perhaps. There is the spacing at the back. And it really is swinging every which way. We've had the Americans in the lead. We've had England in the lead. And we've had the Danes in the lead, and now if it stays this way, it could well be that England and Denmark will be tying for the lead. They go over the line, Lee wins it, second place was Olsen, third was King. Well, the score is swinging around because that now means that England and Denmark are leading on 20 points apiece, and the Americans have slipped into third place on 18. It really is a remarkable uh, World Cup final for variations in the score. Well, here's Chris Morton coming in for Heat 11 in a world final which really has swung one way and then the other. England now jointly in the lead with Denmark on 20 points each and the Americans back on 18. There's Bobby Schwartz and the Americans will look to Boogaloo to get in the groove and pull them back in touch at the top there. Morton's on the outside. He hasn't made a start yet and he does like the run around the outside at the first turn and England will be looking to him to produce that kind of party piece here in heat 11 on the inside if we look across there we can see in blue Antonin Kasper hasn't scored a point yet from Czechoslovakia grid 2 the Danish reserve Peter Rohn grid 3 Bobby Schwartz on the outside Morton as it really is tight and tense and away they go and again Morton's been left Morton really left a mile He's swinging in and he's moved through from last almost up to first. Rawn leads it in second place. It is Morton. Third place is Schwartz. Brilliant first corner from Chris Morton and uh, almost brings Schwartz down there at the pit turn. And now Morton must get up on Rawn. This is a surprise. The young reserve for Denmark and he was reserve at Bellevue where Morton is the big star and he's stretching Chris Morton and moving out onto the dirt and that's intelligent tactics. Morton's in second place. Schwartz is third. And we'd rather hope that England were the side with the strength and depth and the reserve uh, twinkle. But it's Denmark who have produced the joker. And it's Peter Rohn. And this could be the race that could win Denmark this World Cup on native soil because he's going away from Morton and Schwartz. And really, on form, he's got no rights to do that. The young discovery and the crowd here and points will rise to this young man. Peter Rohn, 21 years old, wins. A race in his first World Team Cup final. Morton must be said disappointing in second place. And Schwartz in third, and that takes Denmark into the lead. And we can but conjecture if they're going to let it slip again. And as the climax of this World Cup approaches, it certainly is getting uh, electric out there. You can see Ollie Olsen out there running from the pits to whisper a few words of encouragement to Hans Nielsen. Such an inspirational leader. There is the lineup. Peter Collins coming in for Dave Jessup on the inside. He's in yellow and black. Yuri Stansel could be a spoiler in grid two. Hans Nielsen has dropped one point. He's in grid three. Dennis Segalos will be looking to prove uh, something to himself and his American compatriots after uh, he admitted he went to sleep in his last ride and allowed Michael Lee to get up. 
So heat 12, a reminder of the scores now. Denmark 23, England 22, America 19. I think we can discount the Czechs, they've only got two points. And this is heat 12 at every point now, vital. And PC, Collins on the inside, the England skipper coming in. And away they go on the inside, and Nielsen's got away, so too has Collins, and Sigalos has made a line as well, and as they branch out down the back straight, it's Nielsen leading, second place is Sigalos, third place is Stansel, and Peter Collins, disastrously for England, is at the back. So still Nielsen, Sigalos getting up to challenge, and Peter Collins has made an absolute hash of the bottom corner, out of our picture, and perhaps that's just as well for him because this really spells out disaster with a capital D for England with Nielsen going away clear now of Sigalos in England who we fondly thought had the strength in depth and reserve for the next world champion and a man who had scored three maximums in World Cup final a mile behind now still Nielsen second place Sigalos and Collins has pulled out Nielsen will win, heat to number 12, as the Danes start to consolidate, Sigalos is second, Stansel is third, Collins a forlorn figure, with the machine packing up right in front of our commentary box here, but Nielsen has produced the goods for the Danes, and that means they move further in front now, and they're four points clear, and who is going to stop the Danes now? Peter Collins, you went from second to fourth there, why? Yeah, the bike was slow, and I think the engine, the big end went or something on about the third lap, so it was very disappointing. Moving into heat 14, Denmark now on 29 points, and that's five clear of England on 24, with the Americans on 22, and there is their surprise hero, Peter Rawn, coming in here in heat 14. Dave Jessup is thrown back into the action, riding a machine borrowed from Michael Lee, his teammate, and, uh, well... There's a considerable difference in height, about a foot, I would think. So it will be interesting to see how Jessup will settle on a bike set up for a, a rider much, much taller than him. But we certainly could do with some inspiration from DJ. England slipping behind. And uh, the Danes are uh, looking very, very confident indeed. Rawn won his last race. That was a real surprise. We look at Heat 14 on the inside, on the inside grid in red. It's going to be Kelly Moran. Then Jessup on this borough bike. This is uh, Alice Drimmel, who hasn't done much, although he got up and threatened a bit last time out. There's the lineup inside Kelly Moran. Next to him, Jessup on a borough machine. Grid three is Peter Raven. And on the outside, on Drassic. And away they go. And Jessup, it looks like, has made the start. Jessup's got away on a borough bike. He leads it. Second place is Moran. Third place is Ron, and here comes Ron as they close down on Jessup into the pit corner. Ron's gone wide, Moran's on the inside, and Ron has gone around the outside of Dave Jessup, and this young man is having a benefit. Jessup on the inside, Ron has found some drive where nobody else has found it. And what a hero we've got, what an unlikely one. Who would have dreamed of this? Peter Ron, a giveaway virtually by Bellevue at the start of the season, is winning the World Cup for Denmark with an inspired show. He really has lifted his performance. He has no real right to take apart riders of the world-class ability that he has. He leads it. Jessup, struggling man, but he's in second place. Moran is moving inside Dave Jessup, and Jessup's trying to close down on him, and I think Moran might just get up. Moran now on the inside as they go into the pit corner, and Jessup is holding on bravely there as they turn into the second flag. Rawl wins it. Jessup is second. Third is Moran, and Peter Rawl, 21-year-old, given away virtually by Bellevue to Cradley Heath. Who would have dreamed of this? Really is a fairy story in the land of Hans Christian Andersen. Eric Gunderson could wrap up Denmark's third World Cup success in only their fifth final here in Heat 15. They really need one point to wipe out any mathematical chance of England overhauling them. Heat 15 then, so vital. Gunderson has been unbeaten and has looked immaculate, but he also has Michael Lee in here. And Mike Lee from England has been really a great success for the Lions. He is unbeaten. There is the score after 14 heats, two to go. Denmark needing one point. England have got to win these last two to have any hope at all. The Americans are finished. Czechoslovakia, well, oh, what did happen to them? So the Danes prepare to celebrate for surely, barring a disaster, Eric Gunderson will anchor the World Cup for them here in Heat 15. They just need one point. Eric is unbeaten. Next to him, 
is Bobby Schwartz, the American captain. The American knows. The Americans know their chances have gone. Michael Lee is unbeaten. He's on the grid three, the third grid here. Not a particularly uh, fast grid away in uh, previous heats. Lee, who has been a tremendous success in his comeback to the World Cup squad, no question about that. Gunderson on the inside has looked matchless from the start. The Danes on 32 points. England need to win these last two races and the Danes need to have two last, which is highly unlikely, but still a race in prospects here at Heat 15. Gunderson and Lee in together. Schwartz is away there and so too is Gunderson. Gunderson leads it. Schwartz is second. Lee's coming around the outside of Bobby Schwartz and has just got the legs on him. But Gunderson's in front and looks now well set for a maximum as he circumnavigates the pit corner. And he hasn't looked like being caught all night. We remember, of course, that Michael Lee got up to uh, pip Dennis Segalos. But the lanky pool pirate has a lot of work to do here. As Eric Gunderson here, this 23-year-old from just up the road at Ebsjurg, in what, his third World Cup final, roars away up front. He's cleaning them out. He's wiping them out. And Michael Lee, though he's going very quickly, is losing touch. And this is the race, surely, that Denmark will take the World Cup on home soil for the first time and who can say they haven't thoroughly justified that success it's been a, a marvelous world cup final which has swung one way and then the other and gunderson's nodding to the pits to the lads and says there it is over the line eric gunderson with a maximum individually denmark with a win in a final which has swung one way or the other the danes started disastrously england started beautifully and faded it looks like England will get up for second place, but the crowd is celebrating, and Gunderson, I think, is going to get quite a reception. Lee sporting, and it's lovely to see that. The first to congratulate him, but Gunderson is about to be engulfed because roaring across the centre green, there are teammates, there are mechanics, and I think that uh, Eric Gunderson is going to taste the fresh air of Denmark from a horizontal level. Look at him, he's loving every moment of that. Well, I must say the Danes are looking very impressive at the moment. Last weekend they won the Intercontinental Final through Hans Nielsen and now after just 15 heats of that World Team Cup, they've achieved that one as well. Let's get the final scoreboard now. Denmark accumulating 37 points, England 8 behind them with 29, 2 ahead of the holders, the United States, and Czechoslovakia could only muster 3.